So today, SDS had a franchise stream, a road to the show stream, and like some gameplay. So essentially all that was together, where they talked about some new stuff that was coming to Emily the show. And I've already put all the new changes on Twitter. So if you don't follow me there, the link is down in the description below. It's at the Ant Ortiz, so go give it a follow. And I'm gonna start by saying that I totally kind of expected to be let down this year just because they are releasing the game a month earlier than usual. So I figured less time to work on the game, less improvements. Also, if it's a little echoey in my room, sorry, I've basically emptied out my entire office. I'm supposed to be moving here in the next month or two. So I'm trying to pack up everything. So let me know if there is a little bit of an echo. I'll try to fix it for the next video, but we're here to talk about franchise. So let's talk about it. Like I said, less time to work on the game. Essentially it's 11 months instead of 12 months this year. So I kind of expected to be underwhelmed this year. And I'm not saying that they, they definitely dropped the ball but they didn't blow me away right so let, let's talk about the franchise changes and i've kind of already made it sound like it's a, it's an awful awful year this year which I, I don't think it is i think we've got some good changes some good quality of life changes some small things that help the game mode and i feel like these are some of the small things that we've needed or asked for for the last few years so it's 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 a good improvement it's just, I want more. I want more. So for the first one, let's talk about the incentives to promote players like in real life. And if you didn't know this, a team that promotes a player, a prospect, and they win rookie of the year in the year that they were promoted, essentially in that, that first season, they get a pick in the first year player draft that's after the first round. So essentially they get an extra draft pick. So this is just a screen where you can keep track with all the other players that have been promoted. At least that's what it looks like, right? You can kind of see everything is at MLB level. Um, I guess I could click it so that you guys could actually see it. But essentially what you're getting is you can see the players that are at MLB level and the players who have been called up in the 2024 season. So I'm assuming this is going to be for every season in the, in the save, right? So. It's cool because now you can kind of see the prospects that your prospect that you've called up is competing against who is kind of at the top of the list for rookie of the year. And this is different than just the top prospect list that we already have in franchise because that talks about all the prospects in every um, AAA, MLB, every level. This is just MLB rookie of the year status. So again, it's nothing that's crazy. It's nothing that's like, whoa, we really, really needed this. But it's one of those things that does happen in real life. And at the same time, it's one of those things that adds a little bit of um, realism into the mode. It adds, you know, some more immersion because now you can kind of see, all right, all these guys have been called up this year. This is what my rookie is going to be competing against. Is my player good enough to give me that extra draft pick, right? So something small but you know what it's kind of cool the second one was a, a small improvement to the logic for injured players and also for players that were undrafted and unsigned if you didn't know when they announced like the huge changes to the draft and the scouting in the mlb the show 23 if a player didn't get drafted they could appear in a future draft in your safe so essentially if in year one a player doesn't get drafted you could see his name pop up in year two three or four you know, there, there's that chance that he does re-enter the draft, which I thought was a really cool addition. You know, something that's small that may, like not a lot of people may not have known about, but it seems like there was an improved logic for that. And then also for the injured players, that's good to see as well. It's good to see that there's AI improvements, like that logic improvement. It's always good to kind of keep improving what's going on because, you know, the league always changes. There's always new things that are happening, player moves and stuff like that. So it's, it's again, it's something that's kind of like, behind the scenes, but it's good to see that the logic is improving. Number three, this is for more of those people who like to play like super realistic. And this one is you can load rosters with the injuries that are like current. So people who are out with Tommy John, people who are out with long-term injuries or just small injuries, you can start a franchise with the current injuries that are happening in Major League Baseball, which I think is cool. That adds a new element that we just haven't had before. You essentially had to manually do injuries which a lot of people actually didn't know you could do so now that just that makes it easier for you to just hop into a save with the injuries so now you know like oh man my best pitcher is out injured to start the year and i have to wait a few months to implement them into the roster or hey my best prospect is injured or my top hitter is injured whichever it is you know to have injuries at the start of the year it's a, it's a cool it's a cool addition i i don't know how much i will use it but for those who like super realistic franchise modes there you go it's, it's a small thing but you know what? I think, again, it's, it's one of those things where it's, like, it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. This is one I've been asking for for so, so long, and we finally got it. A player awards tab in the player screen. So you know when you hit triangle 
or Y on the Xbox controller. I totally forgot which button it was. I literally had to pull up an Xbox controller. Um, but instead, you know, the attributes, the stats, the contract, the quirks, awards. We have awards now. So I, now I don't have to manually keep track of how many MVPs a certain player won. I can literally just go to their awards tab and it's there. So MVP, Gold Glove, Silver Slugger, Hank Aaron, All-Star, All-Star appearances, and the batting title. It's a small thing, but man, that is so nice to be able to keep track of things like that and just kind of see how like influential this player was throughout your save. Like you might've had a player that you just didn't realize it was like the craziest all-star in the, in the league. He was just making every all-star game or the Hank Aaron awards every single year or Silver Slugger MVP. Now you can kind of track that for the different players, which I think is cool. Again, it's nothing that's like super, super crazy mind-blowing but it's one of those things that just it, it, it's just a cool addition it's a small addition and i like it the second to last addition that i'm going to talk about is it's kind of like critical situations it's called custom game entry conditions so it's like critical situation situations right previous mlbs you'd have a critical situation you could jump into it and play from that specific moment onward right well, essentially, this gives you a little bit more control of when you hop into those situations. So do you want it to be of high importance, very high importance, medium importance, low importance? So, you know, you kind of get like you can hop into more games. If I, I would assume if you have low importance, you get you get to play more games. Um, what's the earliest inning that you want to hop into a game? And I think this is really cool for those people who just can't afford to play every every game. 162 games for an MLB season is a lot is a lot and also for the people who want to play less innings because in mlb the show you can't set how many innings a game is but this one hey i don't want to hop into a game any earlier than the fifth inning boom i can set that in my custom game entry conditions i want to play a majority of my games i just don't want to play the whole game i'd probably set it to low importance and maybe like the fourth inning is the earliest i want to hop into it do i want to play player highlight moments sure let me check that and the earliest I can play, 7th, 8th, ninth. So you can see there's a little bit more control of the situations that you can enter a game. Just so you know, if you have certain conditions set and those games that you are simming don't meet those conditions, it will just sim those games. You, can't, you won't play them. So just know that, that they will skip games and sim them for you. But at least it gives you an opportunity to kind of get through seasons quicker. Because I know a lot of people just, they don't have the time to play 162 games. Or they don't want to play 162 games. So this one, again, quality of life change. That, again, it's it's nothing too crazy. But I definitely think it helps those people who just, you know, gets through seasons faster. I like this one. It also allows you to play some games rather than just having to sim every single game. So it's one of those things that i i like it it's a small change but at least it's something that's going to help a lot of people get through seasons quicker because i know a lot of people just they don't have the time to play and the final one there's already been an announcement that women will be in mlb the show i don't know like the whole how how many women are going to be added to mlb the show or just like you know the severity of it like you know whatever it is and some people don't like it some people do like it you know what it's a video game who cares it's not supposed to be super realistic but uh, they didn't really touch on it that much in the stream, but I got it. I got it. I got the info that you can add women to franchise in MLB The Show. What you have to do is you would have to create the ball player yourself. You will add them to the roster that you are using for franchise, and then you will start a new franchise with that roster that you've added the women to. So yes, you can use women in franchise and play as women in franchise for your saves. Again, if you don't like it, that's fine. I'm not here to tell you how to play your video game. But again, I think it's just a cool thing. It's something new. Test it out. See how it works. You know what? So there it is. You can add women to your franchise save. And you know what? Play as a woman if you want. So essentially, those were kind of the six things that I noticed from the stream today. They didn't really talk about franchise too much. A lot of it was about Road to the Show and just also showing some of the gameplay changes, presentation, in-game cutscenes, things like that. So like I said, I didn't really expect too many big changes for franchise this year, and there really weren't too many changes at all, but at least we got some small small tweaks, small improvements, and small additions. So am I bummed? Definitely. I really wanted some big changes this year, but am, you know, like I think I'm okay with the small additions. It, it, it's good to see we're still getting improvements, even if we aren't getting those big changes, right? They're still they're still working to improve the mode. 
So there's that. I got to take the good with the bad, right? So there it is. Let me know your thoughts about the franchise changes down in the comments below. If you have some questions, let me know. I'll try to answer them for you. And again, follow the, tw the, 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 the Twitter, the X, whatever it's called. That's about it. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.